Welcome to this week's program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. Will, tell us about your shirt. You always wear a great shirt. This week's shirt is Friends of the Urban Forest. I, I worked at Friends of the Urban Forest during the summer of 2004. I planted trees. I cut tr branches. I, I watered tree, watered plants. I, can, I did that all summer. I continue to do that to do that stuff in at Presidio Stewart's with every every other Saturday or Sunday. I continue to plant, water, and weed. We're, Friends of the Urban Forest got, got me got me into working at Presidio Stewart's. Oh, got me into doing the to doing the work, which I still continue today at Presidio Stewart's. Excellent. I Today, our first guest is attorney Louise Katz, a volunteer board member of the um, Autism Society of the San Francisco Bay Area, who will be discussing a variety of topics, including autism and housing. Will, would you take it from here, please? Gladly. Tell us, about how, tell us how you got on, involved in the autism community and why. Well, when I first came here years ago from Illinois, where I was also licensed, um, I began uh, helping families who had adopted special needs children, and there, was, there were programs set up so that families could get financial assistance to encourage adoption rather than continuing foster care. And so a lot of these children were regional center clients, and from that I learned about the regional center system, and from that I began to focus on and uh, work with a lot of families with individuals with autism. Very interesting. Can you tell us about the Autism Society of the Bay Area? Yes. The, um, this is one chapter of a nationwide organization, the Autism Society of America. The uh, president is of the board is Jill Escher, mm -hmm. and um, she's a very dynamic person who has decided that uh, two years ago, uh, when this cycle of board participation began, that it was extremely important that we focus on the issue of housing and the uh, huge increase of the autistic population, both within California and within the Bay Area, particularly because the high cost of living. And so um, a lot of the programs have been focused on advocacy, um, lobbying, and um, as it relates, and, and development of housing options. The Autism Society also does a lot of things that are um, geared f towards the participation and enhancement of quality of life for mm -hmm. the autistic community. Um, they have a very dynamic website and newsletter that lists a lot of the uh, fun programs. We actually have a fun committee because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's very wonderful parents involved in, um, in the board. Um, we have, uh, there's hikes all over the Bay Area, there's music events, um, all sorts of um, group get-togethers. We also have um, people who are working on the kinds of advocacy that uh, can help individuals. So for example, recently there was um, uh, someone who put together a list of all the day programs in the Bay Area, which mm -hmm. previously no one had access to that kind of information. So they're trying very hard to um, put together a support network, a safety net of information that individuals and families can access to um, be more effective advocates. Tell us about Autism Society advocacy for housing for adults on the spectrum. The Autism Society is working at, at several levels. One, they're, we're trying to educate people and help people understand how to access the housing that exists and then also to be aware of the housing options that they themselves can, can create. Um, some of this is through governmental programs that a lot of people don't understand how they work, and other options are um, through different kinds of um, self-help. So for example, there was, uh, last year there was um, a conference, a one-day conference, um, where Jill, the president of the uh, organization had uh, a dozen plus speakers come through who were uh, parents and advocates who had created their own housing options 
for um, their individual family members and others. They talked about the kinds of programs that they put together and how they did it. And this year, on October 23rd, there is going to be another conference mm -hmm. with uh, similar kinds of information. Um, so there's also advocacy at the um, legislative level, um, working to help legislators who uh, understand what the problems are mm -hmm. and to get more money into the pipeline for these kinds of services. And I think just as important as the actual physical housing is the support that individuals need in order to maintain this housing and be successful to live as independently as possible. That's another issue that goes to the questions of the budget and our governor. <laughs> um, but these are also issues that are, are relevant to making housing uh, accessible and successful. Excellent. A couple more questions related to this. First of all, uh, where can our viewers find out about this October 23rd conference? Uh, well, there's going to, I understand the, um, there will be posted with this program the websites for and, and links to the Autism Society newsletter. Yes. And that lists the, inf that shows, the, has the information, and also the website for the Autism Society. And the website for the Autism Society is uh, very important because it has all the links to a lot of the programs that have been videotaped and that people can see even if they hadn't had a chance to participate. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've been impressed by uh, the Autism Society of the area and your website is the tremendous number of resources that you list for uh, people in the community and their supporters and families. Right, well that's again due to the efforts of Jill and the board. Excellent. And the volunteers who help the volunteers on the board. <laughs> Very good. Um, going back to the uh, housing area in particular, what particular challenges would you say uh, the community, particularly within the, the Bay Area, faces? Well, obviously there's the well-known issue of scarcity mm -hmm. and cost. Um, the issues that, uh, oh, first of all, just as a plug to the Autism Society, it, it is important for everyone seeing this program and for their family members to participate by signing up. There's no fee involved for the membership. The reason why is because when people like Jill and other board members go to Sacramento to speak on behalf of the autistic community, they have to be able to show that they represent X thousands of families, mm -hmm. individuals, families, extended families. And so that is, the, I think, the, the most important baseline is that you participate by showing that as a community you're, you're, out, you're out there, you exist, and you have needs. Um, the, one of the main issues is the fact that people may not understand, but a lot of our subsidized housing is actually paid for with federal funds. Uh -huh. And the state is mandated to use those funds in, in specific ways. And so... Part of the problem is is that when the money from Washington is not increased um, or is decreased and the need continues to rise, you have less and less resources available. Um, I went to one meeting where they were talking about trying to create new guidelines for the supported for the Section 8 vouchers. And basically the woman said, the, the, the moderator said, well, here's our choice. Do we want to have uh, time limits on the vouchers so that people with the vouchers then have to give them up at a certain point so we can serve more people? Mm -hmm. Or do we give out less money in the voucher program so that people have to pay more while they have a voucher and then we can serve more people? And everybody in the audience, they were, you know, um, seniors and veterans and, you know, people with disabilities, everyone was horrified and they go, well, how about none of the above? <laughs> Why, you know? And she said, well, there's just not more money coming from Washington and we have more people to serve. So how do we allocate the um, issue of um, resources that are becoming more scarce when the demand is, is increasing? And so again, that's why I would urge people to join organizations that are advocating for um, increased support for our community because mm -hmm. that's really where the solution a great portion of the solution is going to lie. Tell us about some of the parents' initiatives in housing. 
Well, um, first of all, again, going to the Autism Society uh, website link for the videos, you can see in detail what some parents um, have done, not just in the Bay Area, but also outside the Bay Area. Generally, families have been able to pool their financial resources and I believe sometimes um, look for grant money and, and different kinds of third-party uh, assistance to purchase homes and or land and then you know build larger uh, homes that will be specifically for members of the developmental uh, developmentally disabled community and obviously um, you know, this can be an expensive undertaking, but the point is is that a lot of families believe very strongly that they want to be able to have options that the state and or their local communities are not providing for their children. In order to do this, however, you need to ha have um, supported living type services. In other words, um, staff who will be there at the appropriate amounts of time and help with the individuals uh, who are living there. The, the Lanterman Act, which is the statute that uh, was started, that uh, came, um, that existed as in the 70s, that established the rights of individuals with developmental disabilities in the state of California, mm -hmm. basically says that individuals have the right to live as independently as possible in their communities and to have a life which approximates as much as possible that of their non-disabled peers. So if someone wants to live in their own home or their own apartment, have a job, learn to drive, um, you know, have a social life, learn to use public transportation, um, be able to cook and eat when they want to, et cetera, it's the regional center can and should provide uh, the kind of support that they need to achieve those. Okay. Could you tell us uh, about the uh, support services that are available to allow individuals to live outside their family homes? Yes, if you are a regional center client, you can ask for what's called supported living services, SLS. And supported living services are basically um, the types of services and support that a person would need in order to be as independent as possible. So for example, um, Tr training on transportation, having someone mm -hmm. come into your home perhaps at three o'clock when you're done with your day program or your job and help you get dinner on the table, make your appointments for the next day, go shopping, et cetera, um, pay the bills, all the, the things that have to be done if you're going to um, live independently or as independently as possible. If you, but that's only available if you live outside of your family home. If you, you can also have, and you as a regional center client, you would more or less be required to utilize also in-home uh, in support services called IHSS. Mm -hmm. In-home support services are delivered and paid for by the county that you live in. And so um, IHSS is more for domestic type tasks. Um, helping you, you know, get the, the laundry done, um, light house cleaning, um, things like that. So these combination of services and hours are put together to try to make as cohesive a program as possible to allow people to be as independent as mm -hmm. possible. Um, if you are not a regional center client, you would not qualify for SLS, but you could still qualify for IHSS, the in-home support services. And that, I believe, can also be delivered in the family home, depending, again, upon the circumstances of who you live with and what the needs are. Tell us about your law practice for promoting the rights of individuals on the spectrum. Well, the work that I do is primarily to assist people with uh, obtaining regional center eligibility. And if they are regional center clients and they're having difficulty obtaining the services that um, they believe they need, then I also help um, when they are involved, usually in the process of trying to negotiate. The regional center services are supposed to be provided in a collaborative fashion. So in other words, kind of like a, a 
um, special education where you have an individualized education program, IEP, with mm -hmm. IEP meetings, et cetera. The regional center, you have what's called the IPP, the Individualized Program Plan. The problem is, is that the regional center system is very strained and overworked. The um, social workers called case managers um, have huge caseloads. And very often, the, the, the individual needs are not well-researched or are not explained well enough to families and they often don't know what they're actually entitled to, how the process should be followed in terms of the law, in terms of what kind of meetings they're entitled to, what kind of appeals they're entitled to. So I try to work with families well before they come into conflict with the regional center mm -hmm. um, and try to make it as collaborative a process as possible. I understand that there is a pending program, something I believe called the Self-Determination Program, which um, may be of interest to our viewers. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, again, this relates to the Regional Center. The Regional Center system, as it has existed for decades, um, is that the Regional Center is, is basically a building full of social workers, psychologists, <laughs> you know, telephones, computers, and they vendorize. They, they hire the vendors who will provide the services. The regional center does not provide direct services. So therefore, if you need services, if there is not an available vendor or there's a, mm -hmm. um, a wait list or whatever, then very often the person is stymied as to how they can move forward. There's a new model that is being developed. It's, it's not available yet um, called self-determination, which is with, with certain agreements and controls in place, of which they do not yet have all the rules and regulations, but they're working on it, um, people would be given a, a budget within which to work and find their own provider so that they're not limited mm -hmm. to uh, people who have already signed up as vendors. And there are many qualified providers who do not wish to be regional center vendors. They don't wish to um, have the regional center uh, payment schedule, they don't mm. wish to go through the paperwork, etc. So the idea is that this can give a lot of people control over how they wish to spend their funds. So for example, if someone says, you know, I would very much like to have a summer camp program, and that's how I want to use X amount of money, and I don't need transportation training, so I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And uh, so I think this, this is something that will hopefully be up and running within the next um, year or two. Right now they're just doing it as a, a small pilot program. Is that a pilot program in the Bay Area or in other locations? Or It's across the state, but mm -hmm. it's a very limited number of people across the state. And it's, it's not 100% clear. There's not a great amount of uniformity as to how people who are regional center clients would actually be within this small pilot program. It's only a couple thousand people across the state. Mm -hmm. But anyways, it, it's worth uh, checking into the Department of Developmental Services website and keeping track of how the program is going because they have to develop rules and regulations. The feds have to weigh in on it and approve because, again, a lot of this is federal money. Um, but I think it's an important development for people who want to live as independently as possible. Well. This has been a fascinating uh, interview, uh, Louise, and I understand that all the information that you've given will be posted uh, on our program and on the website. Uh, and I know we'll be hearing uh, much more from you again. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the invitation. You're most welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Louise. You're most welcome. Okay. In our next segment, we are very pleased to have back Camilla Vixler, uh, Ascend uh, co-chair and a founder, who's going to be discussing our rebooted job club. Take it away. Ascend is really excited that this is going to be our third annual job club. And it's going to be starting, this uh, new session will be starting on September 12th. And we have a very um, kind of dynamic program scheduled that's, um, as you say, a reboot or a refresh from uh, the job clubs of the last uh, couple of years. Uh, where, where is the job club going to be? The job club is going to be held at the Arc of San Francisco, 1500 Howard Street, at the corner of 11th Street. And it will run from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m.
and it'll uh, be approximately on the second Saturday of each month. But it's important to check the Ascend website um, to make sure of the times and dates. Excellent. Can you tell us a little bit about the typical format of a job club meeting, or will it vary from meeting to meeting? Well, um, what we're thinking is that while there's a lot of talk in the news about the valuable contributions people, um, neurodiverse population can make, um, and all of the spotlight on the programs at SAP and Microsoft, and while this is all great, the re the fact remains that many, many of uh, adults on the autism spectrum face real challenges in employment. And so what we're looking at is a way of providing information so that adults can help themselves and their families, and also um, providing some individual support and then work with volunteers. So our first uh, speaker is going to be Teresa Wu, who's the regional director of the Department of Rehabilitation. and. Uh, we're going to have her speak because that's such an important first stop mm -hmm. for so many of our members. And frankly, a lot of our members have not had the greatest experience at uh, DOR. And I think it's because they really don't know how to work with DOR effectively. So that's what um, we want uh, Teresa Wu to tell us about, how to be really effective in working with DOR. Um, then in the second part, we're going to have a couple of job developers. We have um, Mark Goodenough, who runs um, a private job consulting uh, company. And then uh, we have um, uh, Brian Calvert, who is a job developer at the ARC. And they will be able to provide some individual support, some little bit of career guidance, uh, resume development support for individuals. And then at that point, after people have had a chance to work um, individually, then we have these wonderful volunteers from the Autism Studies Graduate uh, Department at San Francisco State University. And they will continue to provide um, support and assistance for our members. So we're pretty excited. As well sh you should be. As well we all should be. Will? Uh, how, how, will you, how will you be providing help in, in the job club? Okay, so it's information and individual support. And as we said, uh, the first program on September 12th mm -hmm. is going to be um, Teresa Wu. And then the following month, we're going to have uh, people who work in, uh, privately as well as in the public um, specter working with, uh, so we have Jan Johnson Tyler of mm -hmm. Evo Libri and some other uh, very important uh, programs in the Bay Area. And they will be um, talking about how to work with job coaches, how to work with job developers to maximize that experience, and then also give their insights and in how Department of Rehab can help uh, kind of fund this process and help uh, people access all the possible services. And um, Another uh, component, I think the third month of the program, we're going to be having um, job programs designed specifically for people on the spectrum. So we have the SAP program, which several of our members mm -hmm. are flourishing in. Uh, we have the Specialist Guild and um, other programs which are really focusing on the special talents and abilities of people on the spectrum. And then in December, um, this for so to finish up 2015, uh, we're going to be having uh, LinkedIn, the social media, and employment, and how those things work together. And Brian Jacobs, one of our board members, will be facilitating that conversation. Uh, we plan to continue into the new year, but that's our lineup for 2015. Excellent. You've got a full schedule there. Have you got, have you got any special guests who will be speaking at the meetings? Right. All of the people that I mentioned um, will be speaking, and each month, uh, as we send out our publicity and announcements, we'll be highlighting the speakers for that month. So if uh, you got the flyer for this month, you'll just see Department of Rehabilitation and Teresa Wu highlighted, but uh, for each month the plan is to include um, the speakers for that month. Excellent. Is there anything our viewers who are interested in the program should do in saying, I'm going to go to this, how should I get ready? Okay, I forgot to say this really, really important thing, and it's free, <laughs> right? That it's is very important. <laughs> it's free, and people on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum are welcome. Um, people with related neurodiverse conditions mm -hmm. are also welcome. Um, you know, 
uh, family members, if a family member wants to come and get the information, they're certainly um, invited. We look for mentors, uh, people who want to come with a mentor, or maybe somebody who feels a calling to be a mentor could come and um, maybe work with some of the people. Peer, and I'm talking about either people, you know, a retired person or a family member or something as a mentor, but also peer mentors, somebody who's working now and can help coach someone else through that process. So um, we're not asking people to RSVP. Mm -hmm. It's um, not necessary, but you can ask questions that we've had several inquiries, and it's uh, at info at Ascend. So go to the Ascend website and the contact us, and you can send your questions there. I would recommend coming to the first meeting, you know, and being there at 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. um, and see what it's about and stick with it. Excellent. Ex well, I thank you very much. This is a very exciting program. And I guess the last thing is, you would mentioned that uh, the event will be on September 12th at 10 to 1. Correct. And that people are interested in participating. They'll be able to find out more on the website. Is that the same place where people who will be interested in helping out? You've mentioned that you're yes. well looking for a lot of people to... Out. Yes, and right now um, Brian Goodenough is going to be training the volunteers, and my understanding is, although we haven't completely uh, gotten that figured out, but my understanding is that he will work with the volunteers before the meeting, so they'll know what to do. Excellent, excellent. And he has a lot of experience in working with volunteers. Well, excellent. We look forward to very, very good things, and I thank you, and, and Will, do you have anything to tie up? We, we look forward to the job club. We we can't wait to go to the meetings. I feel exactly the same way. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you very much okay. again, Camilla. Okay. In our final segment, we are having board member and occasional moderator, Stacy Kennedy, uh, back with much pleasure. And she's going to be telling us a little bit about what she's involved in. Will, would you like to ask Stacy about what she's doing now? So wh what have you been doing the, these past... What have you been doing for these, these past couple months? Well, um, right now the production, the Barbie Coast Review, is in its third season, and um, it's doing really, really well. I suggest everyone comes to it. Um, here is a postcard of it. And <clears throat> you can get cheap tickets on Gold Star or Eventbrite or the Barbie Coast um, website itself yeah and it's been really spiced up it, it and again the barbie coast review i talked about it um a few you know several episodes ago um it's about the gold rush um 1849 1906 san francisco the old red light district and there's a lot more um there's some new people some new songs in it um including gold well yeah gold rush dance is one of them but um and it, it's all par par parodies of um, local bands in San Francisco, and the words are changed to fit the story. So please come see it at the Balancewar, which is um, on Mission Street, 22nd and Mission. And it, it'll be uh, really fun. In fact, um, across from the Balancewar, they're building a new uh, movie theater where people can sit on cushions. And it's not opened yet, but people can sit on cushions, have have food or drinks even. So anyhow, uh, besides that, yeah, Balancoir, uh, Barbary Coast Review, every Thursday night at 8 p.m. What's the address, Stacey? The address is, it should be 2565 Mission Street. And there's parking on Valencia Street, on 21st and Valencia Street. Um, otherwise, after six, y y you don't have to worry about plugging the meter, mm -hmm. which is very <laughs> So, but yeah, 2565 Mission, the Barbie Coast Review. Excellent. And uh, how much longer will that be going? Oh, okay. So we have an extension. It'll Yay. go till November, either November 12th or November 19th. Excellent. Yes. And, and what days are you having the show? It's every Thursday night at 8 p.m. The doors open at 7. Pre-order pre your tickets. So, yeah, and, and there's a meal, too. Um, and there's cabaret seating, so pre-order. 
Well, excellent. Well, we're very pleased to hear that it's doing so well. We, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. It, and in fact, um, it was sold out to the whole San Francisco Chronicles, and we were just mentioned in the papers. And it's yeah, it's doing absolutely wonderful, and we're just all very happy. Well, as are we. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Stacey Kennedy. You're I know welcome. we'll be hearing a lot of you in more ways than one. Yes. And uh, I believe for this week's show, we're done. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. States Kennedy. This is Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. Have a great week. Nice job, guys. Thank you. Good. Oh. That was good. Hope I did okay. Yeah, you did great. Okay.